Hey guys, welcome to another incredible video here on our channel. Today, I'm going to teach, or at least explain a little about each stage of the anime production process. If you've always wondered how your favorite anime are made, this video is for you. So let's start. First of all, I must point out that the process of making an anime is much more difficult than it seems. After all, all anime are produced by large Japanese studios. Here I am trying to simplify the production process, so that it can be done amateurly by a small team or even alone. It all starts with an idea. Anime creators often start with an intriguing concept, which can range from emotional themes to science fiction concepts. This phase involves intense brainstorming, discussions and choosing elements that will make the anime unique. It all depends on whether it is an original story or based on an existing work. After selecting the concept, it's time to prepare the script. Here, writers work on the structure of the story, developing characters, narrative arcs, and dialogue. It's crucial to create a solid foundation to ensure the plot is engaging and captivating. Generally, the script is made based on the original story of the manga. In most cases, an adaptation is made, where many things are sometimes very different from the original story of the manga. But there are exceptions, where the anime is made without a manga. In these cases, the team of writers prepare the story from scratch. Designers step in to bring the characters and world of the anime to life. Every detail, from the hair to the costumes, is carefully planned to reflect the personality and atmosphere of the story. Here we have some examples of character designs that can be black and white or colored with the character's color palette, all of which can be viewed or downloaded from the Seti Dreams website. The storyboard is like the skeleton of the anime. It depicts the main scenes in the sequence of events. This helps visualize the narrative before the actual animation, allowing for adjustments and improvements. In addition to assembling the staff, the director's responsibility is also to prepare the storyboard. In audience animes, like One Piece or Naruto, unlike seasonal animes, storyboards are usually the responsibility of third parties as well, not just the director. However, in seasonal animes, the director is mostly responsible for putting together the storyboard. The storyboard basically includes all the scenes in their respective cuts imagined by the director, with some observations and side notes. Note also that in the examples taken from Seti Dreams, it is possible to notice that there can be huge differences between one storyboard and another. And it's okay. After all, the director doesn't need to know how to draw well. He needs to know how to direct, lead. Now, let's talk a little about the importance of layouts in anime production. Under the supervision of the director, episode director, and sometimes even the producer, the layout director will fill in the details so that scenes cuts that generally have the same background, with a few frames of key animation and transition. But we'll get there. To perform this task, it is necessary to organize the main frames and warm colors on top of the backgrounds, but these in cold colors. Also, with descriptions of how the camera should move in that respective scene. In other words, the layout director is ordering the frames of each cut, and looking at the entire scene from an overall perspective. This video shows part of Makoto Shinkai's storyboard for Tanki no Ko, already drawn in layouts. But this guy is a different case. Choosing voices and creating the soundtrack are crucial steps. Voice actors bring the characters to life, while the music amplifies the emotions. This stage contributes significantly to the unique atmosphere of each anime. An issue that I must highlight, the dubbing is done before even starting to animate the frames, it is done using only the storyboard, with the team that each scene will have. With the dubbing done, then the character's animation and lip sync will be done. On top of dubbing, animation is the backbone of the process. Animators bring characters and scenes to life by following the storyboard and incorporating movement, facial expressions, and action. This step is labor-intensive and requires meticulous attention to detail. Using numbers, according to the Washablog website, one second would be something like 24 frames, drawings or frames per second, two seconds would be half that, 12 per second and three seconds something like eight per second. It is up to the production and direction of the anime to choose what the animation will be like in its entirety. But keep something in mind, the more fluid, the more frames. The more frames, the more time. More time, more money. And the budget of Japanese studios is usually short, because most of it is used in advertisements to promote the anime, ironically leaving little left over to make the anime. 
Therefore, animes usually work far from 1 seconds, being between 2 or 3 seconds. A complete anime episode usually has, on average, somewhere between 300 and 500 frames or drawings, according to Crunchyroll and Washablock. With the layouts ready, the production assistant takes them to the key animators. These really bring the images to life, along with transition animators in between animators. It would be absurd for me to go into the art of animation itself here. You know, getting into that argument about ugly, beautiful, well done, poorly done. I say this because I have no specialization in the area. But basically, the key frames are the most important ones, better detailed, generally in scenes with more movement. For example, the scenes of Levi's Chase in Shingeki no Kaijin, made by Arafumi Yamai. Another example of very detailed and fluid key animation, but which strays from the action, would be Chika's dance in Kagaya-sama, a romantic comedy anime. The complete cuts are then delivered to the animation director for that episode, as they may change from one episode to the next, who will review the quality and consistency of the key frames. Did you pass approval? Now it's the turn of the in-between animators. Generally, these people are less expensive people than the key animators, as they are responsible for the transition frames between one frame and another of the key animation. The in-between frames are reviewed by the in-between animation director to make sure the transition frames between key frames are made as fluid as possible. If at any point the work does not go through those responsible, whether at the key or in-between, the tables must be redone. In the journey of how anime is made, cuts are often made by a single person, something that is very different from Western Disney cartoon productions, for example, where we have many animators involved in a single cut. Now that the animation is complete, it's time for the colorization team, supervised by the color designer, to scan, clean up, and colorize the cuts. From that point on, the cuts begin to be called cells. The colorizer, does this exist, places the colored cells on the backgrounds, as previously specified in the layouts, and adds any CGI effects, under the supervision of the person responsible for CG on staff. Many studios use different software to colorize the drawings, I could be mentioning several software that can be used at this stage, but there are countless, both paid and free, OpenTunes, TV Paint, Clip Studio Paint, Adobe Animate, Tunes, Moho, Toon Boom Harmony, these are some that are recommended. The last stage of internal production is filming, where the soundtrack, special effects and final editing have already been carried out. It's time for the scenarios. Once the key animators' layouts are approved by, they are sent to the department or studio responsible for creating the sets, and while the rest of the animation process moves forward, the sets will be produced using the set sketches present in the layouts. These artists will be under the supervision of the art director. Most of the backgrounds produced today are done digitally, however. Some studios still use traditionally hand-painted backgrounds. After animation, the editing team steps in to put all the pieces together. The addition of special effects, final adjustments, and synchronization with the soundtrack are carried out at this stage. The editing and post-production phase is a critical moment in the creation of an anime, where the magic really happens to improve the visual and narrative quality of the work. Let's explore in detail how this vital step contributes to an anime's ultimate excellence. At this stage, each scene is thoroughly reviewed. The editing team checks visual continuity, transitional cuts, and the fluidity of the narrative. Color corrections, contrast, and brightness adjustments are made to ensure a cohesive and attractive visual experience. Incorporating special effects is an art in itself. From brilliant magic to shocking explosions, special effects are added to highlight key moments in the story. This requires technical skill to integrate these elements in an organic way, without compromising the visual aesthetics of the anime. The soundtrack plays a crucial role in creating the right atmosphere. During editing, the team meticulously adjusts the synchronization between the music and the scenes, ensuring that emotional moments are highlighted in an impactful way. This may involve creating dramatic pauses, increases in musical intensity, or smooth transitions between different tracks. Even with high-quality animation, small discrepancies in facial movements or expressions may occur. The editing team works to correct these details, ensuring that the final animation is fluid and realistic. This may involve frame-by-frame -frame adjustments to refine the quality of the animation. To create an immersive experience, 
environmental details such as dynamic shadows, reflections, and particles are added. These elements contribute to the visual depth of the scene, making the environment more vivid and immersive. Finally, the anime is ready to be shared with the world. Production companies partner with distributors to bring anime to viewers through streaming, television, or physical media releases. Creating an anime is an intensive and collaborative journey involving diverse talents. Every step is crucial to ensuring the final quality fans love. I hope this in-depth guide has provided a fascinating insight into the anime production process. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends who love anime. Until the next video.